Bunker Busters are among the most advanced military tools in the world. These weapons are designed to penetrate fortified underground or surface structures, such as fighter shelters, military bunkers, reinforced strategic facilities, and even natural caves. They are capable of destroying targets hidden deep underground with unparalleled precision and power. Unlike conventional bombs that only destroy the surface, Bunker Busters act like a key to impenetrable locks, going deep to eliminate the core of the target. These weapons, sometimes weighing over 13 tons and capable of penetrating up to 60 meters, have become symbols of modern military power. An astonishing fact is that some of these bombs can create tremors similar to small earthquakes. They can collapse buildings within a radius of several hundred meters and crack glass within a radius of several dozen kilometers. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today's video is dedicated to the topic of bunker buster bombs and we will examine three key aspects together. First, what are bunker busters? How do they work and what are their applications? Second, what impact would bunker buster bombs have on Iran's military fortifications? particularly missile cities and underground nuclear and military facilities. And third, we will explore whether Iran has operationalized this specific type of weapon, and you may not expect the answer. We invite you to stay with us until the end of the video. The origins of bunker buster weapons date back to World War II, when the need arose to destroy the reinforced concrete structures of Nazi Germany. At that time, Britain developed massive bombs called Tall Boy and Grand Slam, weighing approximately 5 and 10 tons, respectively. These bombs, designed by the renowned engineer Barnes Wallace, struck the ground at supersonic speeds, and their delayed explosions could devastate underground shelters. In 1944, a tall boy bomb hit a submarine bunker in France, penetrating 7 meters of concrete and reducing the entire structure to rubble. However, modern bunker busters emerged during the Cold War, when the competition between the United States and the Soviet Union intensified over penetrating underground facilities. A major turning point in this technology occurred during the Persian Gulf War, 1991, when the GBU-28 bomb was rapidly designed and deployed. This bomb was constructed from repurposed 203mm artillery barrels, and in initial tests, it shattered ice across hundreds of meters on an Alaskan hill. Its objective was to destroy Saddam Hussein's underground bunkers, which were thought to be safe from aerial attacks deep within the ground. The success of this operation paved the way for the development of more advanced penetrator weapons. During the war in Afghanistan, bunker busters once again proved their effectiveness. The BLU-118B bomb, equipped with thermobaric heat pressure technology, was used to destroy the Tora Bora caves. Tora Bora is a complex cave network located in the Safed Ko, Spin Gar, mountain range in eastern Afghanistan near the Pakistan border. Over different periods, it served as a hideout for Afghan fighters against Soviet forces and later became a stronghold for Al-Qaeda and the Taliban against American forces. This bomb worked by dispersing a cloud of explosive material and then igniting it, consuming the surrounding oxygen and obliterating everything inside the cave. Eyewitnesses reported that the rocks inside the caves became so hot after the explosion that they melted like lava and then solidified again. Bunker Buster weapons are divided into two main categories, guided penetration bombs and penetrator missiles. Guided bombs such as the GBU-28 and GBU-57 MOP, Massive Ordnance Penetrator, are dropped from aircraft and reach their targets through laser or GPS guidance systems. The GBU-57 bomb, weighing 13,600 kilograms, is so massive that only one of them can fit inside a B-2 Spirit Bomber's bay, and pilots must carefully adjust the aircraft's balance to avoid complications during flight. On the other hand, penetrator missiles, such as specialized versions of the Tomahawk cruise missile, are launched from land or sea, and can strike underground targets from long distances. From a technological perspective, these weapons consist of three key components. A reinforced body, an explosive warhead, and a guidance system. The body is typically made of alloy steel or material such as tungsten and depleted uranium. Depleted uranium, with a density 19 times that of lead, allows the warhead to act like a massive needle, penetrating hard layers with its kinetic energy. The warheads of these weapons also utilize advanced explosives like HMX or Tritonal, 
which possess high destructive power. A critical aspect is that the warhead must detonate after the bomb has penetrated, and for this purpose, advanced delayed fuses are used. Some bunker-busting weapons are equipped with multiple warheads that explode in stages to increase penetration. The guidance system ensures that the bomb reaches a precisely designated target with unparalleled accuracy. Bunker busters have been used in numerous military operations. During the Persian Gulf War, the GBU-28 destroyed Baghdad's bunkers, and in Afghanistan, it reduced Al-Qaeda's caves to ashes. However, today, the primary targets of these weapons are underground nuclear and military facilities. Russia, as the successor of the Soviet Union, along with China, North Korea, and Iran, possesses an extensive network of underground military facilities, including air defense bases, missile sites, command centers, and even underground airports. Conversely, the United States and Western Europe also utilize underground facilities. Consequently, all parties are compelled to equip themselves with bunker-busting weapons. Defending against bunker busters is a major challenge, but not an impossible one. The first strategy is increasing the depth of bunkers. If a bomb can penetrate 60 meters, facilities should be built at a depth of 100 meters or more. Iran has implemented this method in its Fordo nuclear facility, which is embedded within a mountain. The construction of Fordo was so complex that Cold War era tunneling technology was used in its development. Additionally, Iran's mountainous geography has enabled the creation of deeply buried underground tunnel networks, known as missile cities, beneath peaks several hundred meters high, something Iraq lacked. In Afghanistan, similar mountainous terrain proved to be a nightmare for Soviet and American invaders. The second method involves using more resistant materials. Reinforced concrete with tungsten or ceramic layers can slow down penetration. The third method is deceiving the enemy. By constructing fake tunnels or spreading misinformation, bombs can be diverted. North Korea has masterfully employed this tactic, creating a labyrinth-like tunnel network that confuses adversaries. The United States and Israel have repeatedly threatened to use these weapons against Iran, but the consequences of such an operation would be extensive. An attack on Iran could inflame regional tensions and even endanger the Strait of Hormuz. The issue is that the production and use of bunker buster bombs come with exorbitant costs. Each GBU-57 bomb costs over 3 million not including the expenses associated with flying bombers such as the B-2, which are themselves worth billions of dollars. Additionally, the success of these bombs relies on accurate intelligence. If the depth or location of the target is not correctly identified, even the most powerful bunker buster could fail. The US tactic for penetrating deeper targets involves the successive use of multiple bunker buster bombs. This is similar to how Israel, during the assassination operation against Syed Hassan Nasrallah, was able to penetrate Hezbollah's underground command shelter by firing a large number of bunker buster bombs. Although it cannot be claimed that Iran is immune to the threat of bunker busters, especially if these bombs are equipped with nuclear warheads, the problem is that deploying these bombs depends on the flight of bombers and fighter jets. Therefore, attacking Iran's underground nuclear and missile facilities would require a complete suppression operation against Iran's air defenses, which would be difficult to execute due to Iran's vast geographical expanse. The best chance for hostile forces would be to use bunker buster cruise missiles with less penetration power targeting vulnerable points such as tunnel entrances. Today, building and developing standard bunker buster bombs is not particularly complex. These bombs, which can penetrate 3 to 5 meters, require a bomb roughly the size of the Mark 84 to be equipped with a metal casing made of steel or tungsten, with a minimum thickness of 2 centimeters. Inside this metal casing, between 200 to 300 kilograms of high explosive materials should be placed. When combined with a precision guidance system and a delayed action fuse, this creates a bunker buster bomb. This class of bunker busters, typically used to attack airbase bunkers, is quite common, and several countries possess them. Therefore, Iran's air force faces no particular challenge in developing this class of bomb, even though it has not been officially displayed. However, developing a bunker buster capable of penetrating depths of several dozen meters requires more advanced technology and specialized aircraft. Unlike countries such as Russia, China, and the US, Iran currently lacks strategic bombers. Instead, 
It only possesses the Sukhoi Su-24 tactical fighter bomber, for which it might be possible to develop a specific type of bomb. However, as we know, Iran's strength does not lie in its air force, but in its ballistic capabilities. Interestingly, this year, what appears to be Iran's first bunker buster ballistic missile was publicly displayed. This missile features a heavy metal casing designed for deep penetration, which can be filled with explosives. The development of bunker buster ballistic missiles is not a common approach, but there are some similar examples, such as China's DF-15C. It appears that Iran's focus on developing such warheads increased after the True Promise operations, following encounters with specific Israeli bunkers. More information will need to be awaited for further details. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more exclusive military content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.